Hello, football fans. Welcome back to another episode of SEC Kickoff. I'm Vince Dooley. Week number five is upon us, and the action on the field is only getting more important. SEC teams are battling to stay in position for the conference championship. Before we preview the upcoming weekend, let's take a quick look back at some games from week four. Kentucky at Florida. Florida shuts out Kentucky in Gainesville 38 to nothing, but Kentucky's strength is passing and they were without their quarterback, Maxwell Smith. But even so, Florida dominated both the game and the clock, 38 minutes to Kentucky's 22. And they intercepted Kentucky three times, one returned for a touchdown. They held Kentucky to 60 yards passing and a total of 219 yards, which shows the strength of this Florida defense. Jeff Driscoll, the Florida quarterback, continues his steady play, but he did have his first interception of the year. He passed for a touchdown, ran for another, and Florida was in position that they got to play a lot of reserves. Missouri at South Carolina. South Carolina, ranked sixth in the nation, and justifiably so, had a complete game in beating a good Missouri team 31 to 10. Connor Shaw had a game that most quarterbacks dream about. He missed the first pass, but then he went 20 of 20 for 252 yards and two touchdowns. Now, mostly they were short possession type passes to the tight end, but there were a couple of great precision type throws. Marcus Lattimore ran for two touchdowns and set a South Carolina touchdown touchdown record already by breaking Heisman Trophy winner George Rogers' old record of touchdowns. But it was the South Carolina defense equally as good. They've only given up three touchdowns all year. They're fifth in the nation in scoring defense, and they got some tremendous pass rushes, particularly off the corner. They held Missouri to a season low of 255 yards. And I'll tell you, South Carolina's kicking game is something to watch. Most exciting player I've seen in the conference in H. Sanders. He had a 49-yard punt return. South Carolina team is ranked sixth, and deservingly so. Vanderbilt of Georgia. Georgia's ranked number five, and justifiably so, because they dominated a Vanderbilt team that took them to the wire last year. They won 48-3. It was a complete football game. Offensively, Georgia had 567 yards and were up 45 to nothing at the end of the third quarter. Junior Aaron Murray continues to be on a roll, maybe at this time, maybe the best playing quarterback in the league. Had another great game, 18 of 24 for 250 yards. He's got a lot of good receivers, and he's got a multiple of good running backs all of a sudden. The two freshmen, Tide Gurley especially, he had 130 yards in 16 carries. His counterpart, another freshman, Keith Marshall, also had 82 yards and 10 carries. Both of them had two touchdowns, and Marshall had a 29-yard run and a 52-yard run for a touchdown. Georgia's defense held Vandy to no touchdowns. LSU at Auburn. Auburn's young defense grew up a lot in holding the previously number two ranked team in the country, LSU, to 12 points. LSU is a 20-point favorite. They won by two points. Auburn caused two fumbles by the young LSU quarterback. LSU's offense before the game led the SEC with 48 points a game, but they could only manage to score 10 points offensively against this Auburn defensive team that's getting better each week. But it was LSU's defense that won the game, caused a safety, which actually turned out to be the difference in the game, and held Auburn under 200 yards of total offense. Now it's time for Football 101, which is basically fundamental football. This week, we're going to break down the play-action passing game. Both Georgia and South Carolina and Alabama have used their successful running attacks to open passing lanes for their quarterbacks and receivers. Let's look closer at a couple of examples from last week. Well, South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama all work out of the spread. And we'll just look at a couple of examples of uh, how the threat of the run, uh, certainly in South Carolina, the threat uh, of Lattimore, uh, and uh, also could be Alabama, could be Georgia. But in most cases, the quarterback puts out, sticks the ball in, and what that does is affect these linebackers. And that's the real key, the linebackers have to respect these running backs because they are good. And then when they don't come back and hang here, then that opens up lanes in the middle 
behind the three deep secondary people, and that's happened time after time. Now, even uh, against uh, other teams, you can not only have this, but it happened in the, in the South Carolina-Missouri game where the quarterback fakes the ball to Lattimore, comes out, the tight end delays, and uh, comes here, and then the backside end is wide open because the linebackers, once again, are held by the threat of Lattimore, who had scored two touchdowns earlier in the ball game. Okay, now let's shift our focus to this upcoming weekend. And this week, head coach one-on-one, -on -one, we visit with Ole Miss head coach Hugh Freeze. Coach Freeze and the Rebels have a challenge this weekend as they head to Tuscaloosa to take on number one, Alabama. Yeah, year one, I, I hope we can look at all 12 games and see that our kids passionately competed for our great university for all 60 minutes. That's really our one goal. The, the other thing to establish, I think, if we're going to be successful four years down the road, is we've got to get a core group of guys that understand what personal accountability is and how it affects the team, and then to start developing great team chemistry and recruit. Those three things. We've got to stockpile some talent and some depth to help with what we have uh, now, but no matter what talent we get or what we have now, we've got to get personal accountability right and some team chemistry. Now that we've heard from Coach Freeze, let me give you my thoughts on the upcoming game. Mississippi at Alabama. Alabama's defense prides itself in teams not scoring on them. They are second in the nation in scoring defense. What complements their defense is a ball control offense. A.J. McCarron throws the ball extremely well, and he's got a stable of running backs led by Eddie Lacy. Ole Miss may be Alabama's greatest defensive challenge. The Rebels are small, but they're averaging 37 points a game. They're actually coming off a great win over Tulane, 38 to nothing. They're three and one in the league already, and they only won two games last year, but they will have one heck of a challenge against this Alabama defense. Arkansas and Texas A&M kick off at 1221 on the SEC Network. The Hogs head to College Station in desperate need of a win. Arkansas at Texas A&M, and this could be a track meet in College Station. Arkansas has Tyler Wilson back, and his receiver, Kobe Hamilton, set an SEC single-game receiving record, 303 yards and 10 catches. But their defense continues to be porous, which is not good against a very talented A&M offensive team. For this week's SEC flashback, we go to 2006 and a game between Tennessee and Georgia in Athens. The Bulldogs jumped out to a fast start in the ball game. However, the ball stormed back in the second half. Off before the clock runs out on the quarter. They do, Sutherland. He Henderson, who has one touchdown return this year and another one that he squandered. Look out. Look Mikey out. likes it. How about the block on the punter? Third and six, Tereshinsky wants to throw out in the flat. Sutherland, down! Touchdown! First down, right on the one-yard line. Quarterback keeper by Ainge, and the big quarterback's in there for the touchdown. Ainge with time, one more time, wide open, meets him, touchdown! High snap, and it's blocked. Live ball in the end zone, touchdown Tennessee. Foster to the outside, dives for the goal line, touchdown. As well, and boy, it's, just, it's great to come on the road and get a win like this for Philip Fulmer of Tennessee. Wow, what a shift in momentum that Saturday night in Athens. What will I be watching for when the Vols and Dogs get together this Saturday afternoon? Tennessee and Georgia. Well, first of all, from a personal standpoint, I won't be at the ball game. I'll be watching it at home. Uh, I have to pull for my son, but 
there is no way that I'm going to pull against Georgia in Sanford Stadium. Tennessee is much improved, but will have a tough challenge against a complete Georgia football team that's ranked fifth in the country. Georgia has tremendous balance. Offensively, they're first in the SEC in scoring 47 plus points a game with a balanced offense, passing for 287 yards and rushing for 243. Junior Aaron Murray was 18 of 24 against Vandy and his experience is really paying off. And Murray has a fine group of receivers and he's got some great runners all of a sudden because the freshman running back, particularly Ty Gurley, he has all the tools to be one of the real good running backs or great running backs in this league. Michigan with a tight end and fullback and having to recruit out of a lot of that pro style. Gurley, Boy. touchdown. <laughs> Speaking of pro style, and a fullback and a tight end. He leads the league in rushing with 102 yards. He leads the league in uh, scoring with 10.5, and he leads the league in all-purpose yards at 164.3. Tennessee, given time, Tyler Bray is one of the best passers in the country, and given time is a key in this ball game. Lengthen their lead, and they do! However, it should be an exciting football game if Bray has time to throw the football. SEC divisional games are only getting more important. With that, here are a couple of games to keep an eye on this weekend. Coming off a big win over Missouri on Saturday, the South Carolina Gamecocks head to Lexington to face Kentucky. This game kicks off at 7 Eastern and will be broadcast on ESPN2. South Carolina at Kentucky. The one thing that Kentucky has going for it is that they are at home and are hopeful that the number six ranked South Carolina team will not be quite as ready after coming off their great win over Missouri. It's gonna be very important that Kentucky's quarterback, Maxwell Smith, is back, because if so, he could generate some offense to make it exciting. Otherwise, the South Carolina defense will dominate the Wildcats. Arkansas and Texas A&M kick off at 1221 on the SEC Network. The Hogs head to College Station in desperate need of a win. Arkansas at Texas A&M, and this could be a track meet in College Station. Arkansas has Tyler Wilson back, and he threw for 419 yards and three touchdowns last week. And his receiver, Kobe Hamilton, set an SEC single game Receiving record, 303 yards and 10 catches. Kobe Hamilton, no one's gonna stop him. An 80 yard touchdown catch. And Arkansas is a two point conversion away from tying it up. But their defense continues to be porous, which is not good against a very talented A&M offensive team, particularly their freshman quarterback, Johnny Mansell. Molina tucks it and runs. Look at that move. Touchdown. Who throws and runs. He threw for three touchdowns and ran for two last week. A&M's kicking game is something to contend with, and they are dangerous. Dustin Harris had a 96-yard punt return and set an SEC record of 246 yards in punt returns last week. Well, football fans, there you have it. I am officially ready for another SEC Saturday, and you should be as well. Enjoy your football weekend, and I'll see you again next week on SEC Kickoff.